Welcome to my introduction to networking course, typically abbreviated ITN. This will be for the CCNA version 7 curriculum. Hello and welcome. This is Lab 9.2.9 .9, examining the ARP table. So I just opened my lab. I'm going to get it all adjusted. Again, read the ARP table. I have a screenshot of this off my screen. Read the objectives in the backgrounds. And at least for me, I'm going to jump in directly to the instructions. So we're going to get to 172.16.31.2. Get to our command terminal and we're going to go ahead and do ARP D. We can see that right now there is no ARP table, there's nothing there. So we are going to go ahead. Oh, sorry, uh, D is to delete the ARP table, so we don't want anything there. We want a completely fresh, clean table. So we're going to go to simulation mode and into the command ping so we can generate some items ping 172.31.3 typo I'll move that off my screen we'll run through the process All right. So we move the data from the switch. So the ICMP disappears, waiting for the ARP reply. So here's our ARP request. It's an ARP packet. Destination is a broadcast. And then the switch receives it as a broadcast, responds to the request and sends it out to the appropriate port. But it is a broadcast, so it does go out all other interfaces because we don't know a, a critical piece of information. We don't know the MAC address, so it gets sent to 31.3, 31.4, and to the router. The switch now responds and sends it back appropriately. So, question that we have. Is this address listed in the table, uh, table above? No, it is not. So, we're going to go ahead and move the forward to the next device. How many copies of the PDU? So we have this component, the switch gets it and makes three copies. What's the IP address of the accepted uh, PDU? The accepted PDU is 172.16.31.3, that's the appropriate destination. So open the PDU and examine the layer 2, what's happening to the source address? You're going to notice that the source address used to be a broadcast, FFFF. It's now turned into the appropriate MAC address of the IP address of 172.16.31.3. So we get the appropriate MAC address. So as we move forward past that, how many copies of the PDU did the switch make during the ARP reply? One, because it's re replying from our devices back to the source. All right, so that takes care of step one. So step two, let's examine the ARP table. So now 
and let's scroll down. So step two, note that the ICMP packets reappear, open the PDU. And so we're just going to work through this again. So here we have our original request going to our from our source to our switch. Switch sends out three packets. So do the MAC address of the source and destination align with the IP addresses? It does. Once we get our reply, now the source and destination actually do line up. A, we can see the response. We know the destination 172.16.31.3 where it goes back to or correlates back to that physical address. So we now have done step two, B and C. Yeah, I did not go back to real time to do the ping. We don't have to. We, we ran through it so we can do it like that. So what address, uh, what IP address does the MAC address entry cor uh, correspond to? That would be the dot three. In general, when does the end device issue an ARP request? Basically, purpose of ARP is when it does not know the receiver's MAC address. That's when we can figure out the map, uh, MAC address using ARP. All right, so with that, we can now move on to part to step one. All right, so moving on to part two, we need to get some more data. So it does not say to do simulations. So I'm gonna go back to real time. All right, from 31.2, I'm gonna ping dot four. Again, it should send an, an ARP request if it doesn't know the address. So, I'm going to do a remote network now, uh, 10, 10, 10, 2, ping 10, 10, 10.3. Again, same local network, so we should get three and three. So we've done these guys. How many replies? We sent four, we received four. Step two, examine the MAC address table on the switch. Well, on which switch? So I'm gonna go and do switch one. Enable show Mac. Oh, Mac. And here are the Mac addresses on switch two. Enable show Mac. So Mac address. So here's our two Mac address tables. So we start learning what devices are on which port. Do the entries correspond to the table above? Yes, they do. On switch zero, show MAC address table. Again, we did that. Do they correspond? Yes, they do. Why are two MAC addresses associated with one port? That's because both devices connect to one port through the access point. So the access point connects to it, and then that access point acts more like a hub. So. 
we're going to go ahead and go back to part three. Examine the ARP process in remote communication. We're going to generate some more traffic, but this time more remotely. Ping 10.10.10.2. Oh, that one. Let's examine the ARP table. What's the IP address of the new ARP entry? 172.16.31.1. Why? Because that's the router. That's the default gateway. So we're going to go ahead and clear the information. Tag D, verify, no entries. We're going to reping 10.10.10.1. Oh, you know what? Let's try that again. Simulation mode. Bing it again. Two packets are coming now. So how many PDUs appear? Two. So we can see that as we move forward, our switch forward it to the router, and our router forwards it back to the switch. So what's the target destination IP address of the ARP requests? That's going to be the default gateway, 172.16.31. Why? So the destination IP address is not 10.10.10.1. Why? because it's a remote network. That means we need to send it to our default gateway on our local LAN. Our local LAN, 172.16.31.1, will then receive it and process it. The official response is the gateway address of the router's interface is stored in the IPv4 configuration of the hosts. If the host is not on the same network, then the source will use the ARP process to determine the MAC address of the router and then the router's address. So we're going to switch back to real time on the router's interface. Get to CLI. Enter privileged exec mode. Show MAC address table. Why are there no information? This command means something completely different than the switch command show MAC address table. That's why. So let's go ahead and let's enter show ARP. And here we have our ARP responses. Is there an ARP response for 172.16.31.2? Yes, there is. And the age is one minute. What happens to the first ping in a sim, uh, situation where the router responds to the ARP requests? That's typically the timeout. So we've now answered all questions. Any questions, issues, thoughts, concerns, please let me know. Thank you. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture help build long-term retention so do not be afraid to communicate with this topic again i'm here if you need anything thank you